The graph paper composition challenge is something I came up with a few years ago to help students think about the space in their picture. This is especially useful if they're doing any sort of lettering or typography, uh, but really it's a, a fun puzzle to do anytime you have a little extra time, and especially good if you're having some issues where you need everyone to just spend a whole class period working quietly. So the challenge is to fill in this space with different blocks of color in the same number as the sides. So I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I have a five by five square here. I always start them out with this because they say, oh my goodness, that's so easy. I can't believe you're having us do this. So I'm gonna color in one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I'll switch colors. Again, I'm going to fill in five boxes. Switch colors. And of course, the important thing here is they are choosing which boxes to color doesn't matter what colors they use, it doesn't matter which boxes they color in, but the trick is that all of the colors, all five green boxes have to touch, no diagonals, all five blue colors boxes have to touch, and so on. So that when you finish with your square, you should have in a five by five box, you should have five colors of five squares and they should all touch with no leftover spaces. Okay, at this point everyone's gonna say, yeah, we can do that easy enough. Okay, so now we're going to do six by six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Went a little far there. If you've got a class that you are imposing silent art, this is a really good thing to do. So this time I'm going to fill this one with six blocks of each color. And, you know, pretty quickly they'll say, well, can't I just do, you know, stripes right across the top? That will make, you know, six. And sure they can, but, you know, they'll get bored with that pretty quickly. So, you know, the, the challenge is to make, you know, different shapes, to not just do stripes straight across. Okay, that only took a few minutes, and now they're getting pretty sure of themselves. So let's make this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven by seven. And we're going to fill this one in with seven boxes of seven blue. Uh-oh. So this is where you get them. Now, because I was not planning carefully, I have ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, one of the things I like to tell my kids, and this is true, that I have gotten up to 14 by 14 without making a mistake. This, of course, will immediately elicit, oh, I can do that, I can do more than that, I can do 30 by 30. So, all right, go ahead. As you can see, I screwed up. Again, 13 by 13 is the best I can manage to do. But it's a good example to your kids that you really have to pay very careful attention, which, of course, I thought I was doing, but I guess my mind was wandering. This exercise is so adaptable. I did this one uh, just, you know, with colored pencils, mixing any kind of color that you want. 
Uh, and I usually do this middle school and higher. You can do it with fourth and fifth graders uh, as well. Um, you know, however much they can get done in a single lesson. But you can also adapt this to use it for color theory, uh, using only complementary colors or only tints and shades. If you are working on ruler skills, you could certainly, instead of using graph paper, have them create their own grid system with the ruler first. You can make up rules that are more challenging, like say, you know, you can't have doubled up sections like this. You only have to do them in single lines. You could try it with different materials. You could make it a collaborative project where people are working from different corners. There's really all sorts of different ways that you can adjust this. If you've got the directions written out, it can make a great sub plan. Uh, I'm going to put my uh, printed out version of this on Teachers Pay Teachers uh, so that you can download that and get the instructions. If you get to a point where everyone just needs to take a break, slow down, work quietly, individually, this is really a great assignment. It can be as short or as long as you need it to be, and I always like to have it in my back pocket to pull out anytime I need it.